Hello, my name is Mrs Giles and I'm the Head of English at Graham Balfour. I teach uh, Year 12 and 13 and I am joined with Mrs Miller and Mr Rowley who uh, deliver these lessons. So if you liked English and English Literature at GCSE then and you're thinking of taking English, if you want to debate, interpret, evaluate and explore then this is the thing to do. Um, if you liked GCSE because you were able to analyse and break down text then we do more of that but the difference is we go a little bit deeper and also what you are given is the opportunity to really truly explore the context within which these texts are produced and the context with which in which the writers are writing and that means that um, there are points of view to be had there's reading about the subject to be had so therefore this creates a debate about the meaning of the text and the intentions of the author so if you like to get stuck in with opinions and ideas then English literature really is one for you. If you're thinking of going on to a career where you do that, where you analyse, evaluate, critique, and it might not necessarily be um, English that you choose to do at university or for further studies or indeed in your job, these are still crucial skills and there are human skills that you need like writing and evaluating. So they are really, really interesting skills to do study literature because you love reading that is the right answer if you want to do literature you have to you have to read or you have to have an interest in reading new texts and different texts if you've got something to say always you're criticizing books or you're saying I love this I like I don't like that and these are the reasons then also this is really good for you or because that you think that writing and literature says something to you speaks to you and speaks to the world okay so if you want to do any of those things, that's a good way of starting literature. OK, one writer once said, a very famous writer, J.D. Sanger, said, without literature, life is hell. And so reading. You do have to read a lot of books. You at least have to read the set texts, the core set texts. We do like you to read around the subjects as well. So, for example, this year we've recommended that the war books that uh, the students read at least two more war novels, even though they're, they're only reading one in class. And that gives them the strength to be able to look at it uh, through thematic through theme and through context, of course, because it is a synoptic study. OK, so, for example, I'm not a big fan of um, Dickens, Charles Dickens. In fact, I would really, really rather never read another novel by him again. I don't really dislike him, but he's he's the one I like the least out of all the literary uh, writers. So you don't have to like everything, but because I've read him, I'm able to have that standpoint that I dislike him and I'm, I'm able to, to argue why I don't like him. So I come from a place of knowledge and that's what I encourage every reader to do, to come from a place of knowledge. Uh, the course, it's very um, uh, easy for me to explain to you. It's a two year course, uh, two exams at the end. They are quite long, two and a half and three hours respectively. And there's a coursework unit. The coursework unit's worth 20%. Um, the topics covered, so in year 12, we study war and its after aftermath. So we look at a range of tests from World War I um, based on different experiences. So in the trenches and outside the trenches and the aftermath and how they're received. And then in the second year, we do um, a theme, Love Through the Ages, and um, more about that in a minute. And then the text across time is an, uh, a non-exam assessment and it's 2,500 words. Okay. In year 12, we do these set texts, OK, so you can come back and have a look at those. But they do change depending on the teacher you get. So that's what we're doing this year. Birdsong is an amazing novel and I recommend you read it anyway, regardless if you're sure or not. Um, the paper itself has three uh, three essays, two sections. So, you know, all these, these skills that you're learning at GCSE come in really handy when you're tackling these. OK, you get poetry in there, you get a poetry comparison um, and you get an unseen prose text. So it's a little bit like what you're used to doing now. OK. Love Through the Ages, which um, I'm currently starting, um, well, I have started with my year 13. That's worth 40%, so both exams are, are equally balanced, and we find that this is the best way to teach it. Um, 
uh, that we, we balance it out by year by year. You've got to do Shakespeare, of course, and we tend to do Othello, which is an amazing play about race and identity and love and jealousy. It's a really, really interesting play about characters and human beings, you know, and the way the minds work. Very, very dramatic. Uh, we do a novel this year. We're doing Wuthering Heights again. It can change. Wuthering Heights is amazing. I am loving teaching it at the moment. And I have to say the students really like it too. Um, and you get one collection of poetry. I'm going to be moving on to modern, some modern poetry. And by modern, I mean in the last century. OK, um, but you might you might have uh, pre-1900 poetry. OK. So um, uh, all the details are on here and here's some of the themes that you could look at as well. So some of those are super, super interesting and it just depends what floats your boats and what you'd like to choose. We prefer it if you have come to us with some really, really imaginative ideas and um, some some books that you've read or are reading that you, you really want to get stuck into and know and understand what the writer is is trying to present through that form, that novel, that play or that poetry. OK, um, here's some suggested books. You have to do one which is pre-1900. As I said, we teach one text and we tend to teach the 1900s uh, novel. Or um, in this case, we've just done Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, which is great. Um, I've got um, a student at the moment doing um, a Wilkie Collins novel, so The Woman in White. But, um, and we've got two students who are studying Frankenstein along with the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. But they could have done a really, really modern um, novel to go with Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, which is pre-1900. OK, so that we can do. Here's an example of a task. And you'll notice a step up from GCSE. It's really demanding. Um, you know, uh, we normally find a quotation. So there's a quotation there at the top. Sensation novel was at best when tugging at the seams of certainties and easy solutions. So the idea is that you write in a critical way um, and um, you know, um, a sophisticated way to explore the, the differences. So there's a few things. Now, why might you want to study English literature? Of course, you can do it just for your pure enjoyment or that you're very good at it and you know it's going to be a stepping stone to the next thing you move to. But there's all kinds of jobs that you can go into. And actually, you know, as part of your CV, it will look quite uh, beneficial to, for you to have English literature. So advertising, marketing, journalism, working in the radio, even if you're not presenting, all of these things are really good. So two of my favourite radio presenters actually did 
um, did, did degrees in English literature. So it just goes to show that um, it is quite a versatile subject and it's one that is very well respected too. So if you want to choose it, you are, we can't wait to see you and uh, we do have